for the thrilling adventures of Lightning Jim. For the last two years, the San Marcos Valley has been at the mercy of a band of rustlers and outlaws. But Sheriff Hollison has been unable to find any definite clue as to the leader of the band, nor has he been able to discover their hiding place. Finally, in desperation, he has written to Lightning Jim, begging this fearless United States Marshal to come to his aid. Lightning Jim and Whitey are now talking with the sheriff. Seems funny he ain't been able to find hide in a hair, them owl hooters, during all the time they've been operating, Sheriff. Funny? Why, it's baffling. I've hunted this country over, and there ain't no ranch or a canyon I ain't searched. And the result is still nothing. They drive the cattle, they steal across the river, that's sure. Well, maybe they stay over there until the next raid. No, they don't. Leastways, not all of them. Uh, you see, Marshal, I'm pretty darn sure that Red Jerome is mixed up in this. You see, who is this fellow, Red Jerome? Oh, he's got a little ranch down by the river. Got some horses and a few head of cattle. Don't make much pretense at really ranching. What makes you suspect him, Sheriff? Well, one night, me and a posse tracked the bandits to his spread. Yep, right to his spread, Marshal. But when we got there, we couldn't find a trace of them. But how could they hide on a small spread like you say Red Jerome's got? Beats me, but they did hide, and we watched the river all night. And they didn't cross over, Marshal. It was this Red Dombre at home when he got to the ranch sheriff. Yeah, he was home all right, and all his cooks wore so blue in the face that he hadn't left there all night. But his horse had been rode. And rode hard. Hmm, so this Hulder must be in on it, too, if Red really is part of the gang. Yeah, she's in on it, all right, but I can't get nothing on any of them. And last night, the dang poison varmints wiped out old man Putnam and both his boys and burned the house down right over them. Couldn't you pick up a trace of them? No, nothing. Uh, that is, ex except this. Well, I see. See, that's the handle of a cart. And that's a loaded one, too. Yeah, things like that ain't exactly common around here. Know of anybody who uses one, Sheriff? Oh, I don't exactly recognize it, if that's what you mean, but Red Jerome is mighty cruel to animals. Back to Red again, huh? Tell me something about this Hulda person, Sheriff. Well, it ain't hard to describe Hulda. She weighs about 300 pounds on the hook. What? Got a face like a bronco with the heels <laughs> and, and a disposition that's a, a combination of red pepper and gunpowder. <laughs> Some gal, Hulda. Well, that's your job, Whitey. Ever? Yes, sir. You're going up to Red's place? Get on a good side of Hulda and see what you can find yeah, out. Yeah, wait a minute, no light. You mean I get to work in a 300-pound uh, vile cat? Sure do. Well, I won't do it. Yeah, like but me. she's Swedish, uh, too, uh, uh, Whitey. Uh, uh, you ought to get along swell, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, she's a man-eating tiger, all right. Yeah, uh, man-eating tiger. And uh, I'm supposed to walk up to her and say, a nice kitty kitty, a pretty kitty, a kitty wants some milk. Well, I quit. Well, you can't quit, Whitey. Them's orders. Well, they might spill something that'd help us. Say, no, why don't you go up there, Lightning? You're a better-looking fellow than me, and you're sort of more romantic. <laughs> <laughs> don't say, uh, how does your dish, Whitey? <laughs> me and the sheriff will work on this end. By the way, Sheriff, think I'll take this squirt handle, if you don't mind. Oh, don't mind at all. Don't see what good's going to do, though. Well, I might be lucky and stumble on to something. Yo, from what I hear, I, I'll be needing the luck when I meet up at Hulda. Where do you want? We don't want no saddle 
bums hanging around here. Beat it before I take a broom to you. Uh, uh, well, uh, you sure do uh, this thing hurt me, ma'am. Uh, I, I was just thinking. Uh, I never heard a voice uh, like yours before. Huh? If you like my singing, maybe you better come on in. There ain't nobody else here. I was just getting lonesome. Uh, we, uh, well, I was looking for it, uh, but uh, there's probably nothing I could do around there. Uh, maybe I think I better be going. You come on in. We talk about work later on. Hurry up now. Uh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> you know, you ain't such a bad-looking fella. You got real pretty blue eyes. What's your name? Are you married? Uh, well, well, you can just call me Whitey, ma'am. I ain't married. Uh, you see, I ain't the marrying kind. Oh, that's what they all say, till the right woman comes along. Uh, well, well, maybe I better see the, see the boss about getting a job, Hulda. How uh, do you know my name was Hulda? I didn't tell you. Uh, well, I stopped down the road a piece. Uh, I was asking for work, and uh, some man there, he, he told me to come up here. Oh, he said there was a real pretty girl named Hilda working here. <laughs> you think I'm pretty, Whitey? So maybe we get along together just like a couple of those lovebirds. Uh, well, see, now, I better be getting along. Uh, I got to see about that job, you oh, know. I'll give you a job, Whitey. You work for me. Uh, what do you mean? I got too much work for one poor, weak woman. You help me. Chop wood, make fire, sleep, cook. That way we get better acquainted. Yeah, but uh, the boss, he won't like that a bit. Uh, don't you worry about him, Whitey. I can handle Red your own, all right. Here, take this broom. The, the broom? Well, what do you want me to do with it all? Sweet. And when you get too sweet, then you can help me with the dishes. You know, I bet we make a good-looking couple. Get busy now. Hey, oh, hold. Hey, get busy. <laughs> You just about met everybody in town now. Well, now, don't forget, Sheriff. I don't want nobody to know I'm a marshal. I'm Jim Jennings. Yes, sir, hombre, thinking about buying some land around yeah. here. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, howdy, Sam. Uh, Mr. Jennings, uh, uh, meet Sam Bergold here. Uh, he's our banker. Well, pleased to meet you, Mr. Jennings. Same here. But I won't be the banker much longer if the sheriff here don't stop that butcher and outlaw. Allison. What you going to do about catching that varmint? Well, gosh, Sam, I, I'm doing the best I can. Well, honestly. it ain't good enough. This whole country is going to be ruined if he ain't caught and caught soon. Well, uh, confidentially, Sam, Mr. Jennings here is really Lightning Jim Whipple. Sure. Uh, the United States Marshal. Yeah, I told you it didn't want to be known. Oh, shucks, Marshal. Uh, the banker here will keep your secret, won't you, Sam? Sure. Sure, Marshal. You can depend on me. Did you come down here to track down our rustling gang? Well, I'm here to help the sheriff, Mr. Bergold. Maybe between us we can get a line on you outlaws. Well, glad to hear it. Mighty glad to hear it. You know, I got an idea. Yeah, what's that, Sam? Marshal, you drop around to the bank tonight. I'll let you in and we'll go over some papers I got there. I know a banker ain't supposed to divulge no information about his business, You got but... some suspicions, Bergold? Well, I ain't no detective. But maybe so you can put two and two together. You come around tonight, Marshal? I'll be there. Long about nine o'clock. That'd be all right? Yeah, fine. See you then. And good luck in your detective, Marshal. Hold it. Hold it. What you yelling about, Fred? Hey. Who's that critter in there peeling potatoes? What's he doing around here? That's Whitey. He's helping me. I hired him today, Red. You hired him? <laughs> what right have you got to hire anybody? You know we don't want any snoopers around here. He ain't no snooper. You listen to me, Red, your own. I get pretty lonesome around here, working, working, working. Not having no fun, never going any place or seeing anybody. Cooking, cleaning, washing, cooking, oh, cleaning, washing. Oh, now, 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 hold it. Don't go flying off the handle. I ain't mad at you. I gotta watch my step, that's all. Well, you watch your step. Me, I'm watching mine, too. A girl's got to think of her future. And I'm getting to the place where I think I better get married. <laughs> what are you talking about, Hulda? <laughs> I think maybe I'm Mary White. <laughs> well, maybe he won't like the notion. He won't have nothing to say about it. If I decide to marry him, I marry him, and that's it. Well, anyhow, watch your step. I'll get to get in town. The boss sent for me. I'll talk to Whitey in the morning. But remember, we take no chances. <laughs> Come in, Marshal. 
Marshal, come in. Been waiting for you. Are you alone? Evening, Mr. McCall. Yeah, I'm alone. Sheriff went home early. He was up most of the night and... Uh, that got him, Red. Uh, it was easy. <laughs> he never saw me behind the door at all. One good tap on the head. Well, was... I'll take his gun. The man hunting Marshal. Lightning Jim Whipple walks into a trap and doesn't walk out, eh? What do I do with him now, Brigod? What do you think? Get him out of town and dispose of him. Kill him. We can keep on fooling the sheriff, but we can't take no chances with this snooping government man. But the sheriff knew he was coming here tonight. How are you going to handle that? Don't try to do my thinking for me, Red. I can handle the sheriff all right. Yeah, but what are you going to tell him? I'll tell him the marshal came here, sure. He looked over some papers, said he had a clue, and wouldn't tell me nothing more. Then he left. And how do I know where he went? Ah, that easy, huh? Well, just be sure you handle it right. You're getting too big for your boots, Red Jerome. I'm giving the orders around here. Well, you keep your mouth shut. But I'm taking all the chances, Brigode. Don't forget that. Well, there ain't no use quarreling. Hurry up now. Get this law badge tied up. Get him out of town. And don't forget to take his horse, too. Do I shoot the horse, too? No. He's a good-looking piece of horse flesh. Just turn him loose. Somebody will find him. And maybe so I'll buy him. Now, wouldn't that be something? Me riding on the marshal's horse after I've disposed of the marshal. <laughs> That'd be a good joke on the marshal, eh? Ain't that a pretty moon, Whitey? Don't it make you feel all lovey-dovey? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, see, I guess I'm sort of tired, Hilda. Uh, I think you better turn in now. Go on. Put your armor on me, Whitey. Uh, uh, well, don't be bashful. Yeah, all right, Hilda. Uh, you know, Whitey, there ain't no use in our waiting around. I think we get married tomorrow. Uh, 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 what you say, Hilda? You don't need to take your arm away. Put it back, Whitey. Well, all right. There. Ah, we go into the justice of peace and get it over with. We get married tomorrow afternoon. Uh, yeah, but, but hold it. That's sort of sudden, ain't it? Right. He just met me this morning, you know. And I make up my mind to make it up fast. We'd make a nice couple, I think. And when you're my husband, I'll stop making you over the way I want you. Uh, making me over? Well, what you going to do, Hilda? When I get through with you, Whitey, you won't know yourself. My, that moon sure's pretty, ain't she? Oh, I think I got the stomachache. I, I don't feel so good, then. And, and I think I'm going to feel her. You see that Jasper sitting out there with Hulda? <laughs> <laughs> Any crow bait that had put his arm around Hulda and tried to snuggle up to that mountain is a braver man than me, Red. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't funny. We've got to get rid of him and fast. What do you mean, Red? Listen, I've got a United States Marshal back in the cave. A Marshal? Tarnation, Red. How'd you get him? Where'd he come from? The boss come to him. I brought him out tonight hogtied. The boss told me to get rid of him. But this Jasper was holding. You think he's a law badge, too? Yeah, I think it's funny. He come here this morning the same time the marshal showed up in town. Well, let's go get him now, then. No, no, we don't want any fight with Holder's left. Ah, uh, not me. I'd rather tangle with a charging bull than come up against Holder with a war paint on. Listen, watch your chance tomorrow, Slack. And when he gets away from the house, plug him. Holder will never know what happened to him. And what she don't know won't hurt her. <laughs> you mean it won't hurt us? Leave it to me, Red. I'll handle the critter. Lightning Jim escape from Red. Will Slack get Whitey? And if he doesn't, how can Whitey get away from Holder? Well, we'll find out in part two, which follows immediately.
part two of the adventures of Lightning Jim. The sheriff of San Marcos County has called in Lightning Jim and Whitey to help him track down a band of rustlers and killers. Suspicion has fallen on Red Jerome, who owns a small spread close to the river. And Whitey, much against his wishes, has been ordered to get some information from Holder, the 300-pound Swedish cook who works for Red. But Sam Brick Gold, banker in San Marcos, and the real leader of the outlaws, has learned Lightning Jim's identity and trapped him. It's morning now, and Red and Slack, two of the gang, are in a secret cave on Red's ranch. What are you going to do about the marshal, Red? I kill him, of course. But not before Brigode comes across with $1,000. So, you're finally turning on Brigode, huh? Well, not exactly. But I've been doing plenty of thinking. We've been doing all the dirty work. Walking into gunfire, being chased by the sheriff and his men. Yeah, well, Brigode hides in the background, taking care of his own neck. And collecting half the money from the cattle. Yeah, and he's getting the mortgages on the land, too. And pretty soon he'll be foreclosing. Yeah, he'll be owning all the land around here. Maybe there won't be no more split for us. Yeah, he can't kick us out. We got too much on him. Yeah, that's right. But I'm getting mine while they're getting as good. He's going to pay me for killing this marshal. Hey, hey, somebody's coming. Yeah, but there ain't none of the rest of the boys around this morning. Wonder who? For God. Well, he ain't never come out here in the daytime. Get out, Slack. I want to talk to Red alone. Uh, sure, sure, boss. I'm leaving. Well, what's on your mind, Brigode? How come you decide to pay us a visit in the daytime? I told you to get the marshal's horse out of town, too. Why didn't you? Now, listen, Brigode. That fire-eating horse darn near kicked my brains out. I went to the livery stable all right and tried to sneak him out. But he went plumb crazy. I couldn't get near him. Well, where's the marshal? You killed him, like I said? Not yet. I you won't You yellow it. back scorpion. He's got to be killed and buried or flung in the river. The sheriff got all worked up when he found the marshal's horse and couldn't locate the marshal. He's got a whole posse out scarring the country for him. Where is he? You have got him tied up. <laughs> yeah, better than that. I took the ropes off of him and put a chain around his neck. Padlocked it on. He's back in the cave, chained to a rock. Well, then I'll kill him myself with his own guns and dispose of his body. That'll give me the key to the padlock. Sure, here it is. And you clear out. Be working in plain sight on the ranch in case the sheriff and his posse come around. Uh, what are you going to do with the marshal after you got him killed? I'll take care of that. Well, get going. Okay, boss. <laughs> well, well, if it ain't the marshal himself. Chained up like a dog. But a marshal without his guns is like a dog without his teeth. And I reckon I've got your teeth all right. It'll all get you, Brigode, sooner or later. Not me. I'm too smart. Nobody else ever found this cave, did they? Well, I found it and figured out what a swell hiding place it'd be. I planned all this. Plans have a way of falling through, Brigode. Even the best one. Well, mine won't. I hold mortgages on all the ranches around here. The ranches are ruined. I foreclose, then I own all the land, and it's legal. Nobody can trip me up. And now, do you know what I'm going to do? Oh, shoot me, I suppose. Right the first time. And with your own guns, too. I took them last night when you wasn't in the position to object. Hey, what are you... Oh, we oh. this word handle might be a lucky omen. Oh. Get up, your mangy coyote, or I have to choke you. No, don't kill me. Oh, oh. I reckon the law will take care of that. Lucky for me, Red didn't tie my hands up. But it didn't take the trouble to search me. Get that key out for this padlock. I heard you ask Red for it. Come on. Hurry up with that mopping, Whitey. You've got to get cleaned up for a wedding. But, Hilda, I, I don't think you trust me. I'm going to marry, ain't I? What you talking about? Well, uh, there's funny business going around this place. I know that. No, if you really trusted me, eh, you'd tell me all about it. After we're married, it's soon enough to start telling you things. Hurry up with that muffin. I'm all ready to go. Don't I look nice, Whitey? Well, I don't think I want to marry nobody there that don't trust me. You ain't got nothing to say about this, Whitey. You're marrying me this afternoon, dead or alive. Maybe, maybe I'll quit the game then. Are you stuck because my brother works for him? Your brother? You're yeah, my brother. But after I get me a husband to work for me, I think I'll quit. This ain't no place for a lady. Hey, Whitey, come on out here. The boss wants to see you quick. Yo, I come. Listen, Whitey. I'm going to take the buckboard and go to town. I get the ring and the license. I wait for you at the Justice of Peace. Now, you be there by 4 o'clock. You hear? Hey, yo, hold on. I hear you. And if you ain't there by 4 o'clock, I come after you. You hear that, too? Get going, Holder. Red ain't no more to be kept waiting. I'll keep him waiting if I feel like it. Now, remember, Whitey, 
Four o'clock this afternoon at the Justice of Peace and White. Eh, hey, your holiness, you'd better buy a necktie. If we're going to get married, it's got to be proper, and it ain't proper without a necktie. Taking me, Slack. Never mind talking. Just keep moving. Well, I can't figure none of this out. You will soon enough. Yeah, but we've walked right into the side of the hill. We can't go the place further. Lift up those vines there. Oh, what do you mean, Dee? Yeah. But golly, there's a cave. There's a cave here on the side of the hill. Go on in. Hurry up. Yeah, but what are we going in the cave for, Slack? You wouldn't know, would you? You ain't been snooping around here trying to find this place, have you? Oh, no. You're just a little innocent uh, baby, you well, are. Well, 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 what you got the gun in my back for, Slack? I ain't done nothing. No, and you ain't going to either. Now, keep on moving. You got him, Slack? Sure, I got him. <laughs> How'd you get him away from Howdy? <laughs> She's going into town and waited the justice of the peace. <laughs> She's figuring on getting hitched with this broken-down snooper this afternoon. <laughs> uh, well, I reckon Howdy will wait a long time for a bridegroom. <laughs> well, I can't figure none of this out. Uh, why you fellas got it in for me, anyway? Well, I heard some interesting news this morning. It seems the sheriff is out hunting your pal, the marshal. It seems that Lightning Jim has kind of disappeared. <laughs> disappeared? <laughs> Say, what did you do this next door to Lightning? Ah, then you are mixed up with him, huh? You're a law badge, too, huh? Yeah, give yourself away that time. You tell me, no. What did you do to Lightning? Well, I don't mind telling you. He's dead. The big shot shot him this morning. Yeah, must have buried him, too. But he's dead, all right. Just like you're going to be. Like me, did. Killed this morning. Yeah, and if you got any prayers to say, you better start saying them, because you're going the same way. You kill Lightning, you dirty bastard. Take that. Go on, Dick. Hey, take it out of the way. I'm going to shoot him. Oh, you got me, you fool. You shot me. You hooked him. I said Lightning. Oh, you oh, you oh, go on, Dick. Right. Dick, you fool. Easy and then leave. Mighty! You're 15 minutes late! Cool. I was used to starting out after 
Tonight, Nimitz, help me out of this, please. I said four o'clock. Didn't you hear me? No, 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 listen, her lady. You don't understand. I understand you're going to marry me right now, like you said. Get down off that horse. Uh, 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 well, I thought you said the excitement was all over, Whitey. Right? Listen, and you've got to help me. Uh, you don't know this woman. But Captain. you're going to know me better in a few minutes, Whitey. The justice of the peace is waiting for us, and I got the ring. Yeah, but tell me, you don't understand. I can marry you. Honest, I can. You still got time to get the next tie. Come on, now. Don't make me mad. But told I never meant that I was really going to marry you. Oh. Oh, you didn't. Well, listen to me, you knockied, bow-legged, mule-eared son of a horse thief. You swept me off my feet, that's what you did. Making love to me in the moonlight and begging me to marry you. Now you're going to marry me if I have to sit on you all during this ceremony. Lightning, you got to I'm help sorry, ma'am, but I don't reckon you can marry Whitey here. You stay out of this. I don't need nobody to help me take care of this hound, Pop. I'll take care of him, all right. But you see, ma'am, he's my prisoner. I'm taking him back to jail. Jail? Whitey? What's he done? Why, well, he's got four wives waiting for him, ma'am. He's a bigamist and a very dangerous man. Poor wife. Yes, ma'am. Poor wife he's got already. And he told me he wasn't the merry and kind. Oh, I'm a weary bad man, Hilda. A weary, weary bad man. You can't believe nothing I see. Uh, mighty lucky you found out in time, ma'am. I'd hate to see you get hitched up to a dangerous criminal like this man. I think maybe you won't have to take him back to Yale, mister. I think maybe I'll take him apart right now, but you my hands, and I won't put him together again. Hey, Lightning, come on, uh, let's Wait. ride. It ain't polite to run away from lady, why didn't you? Why didn't you? That's a female airway. Oh, I won't ever get to heaven telling out now, Bib, like that, why didn't you? We better ride a little faster, Lightning. That's the only thing I want between me and Holly. It's a lot to speak. concludes another exciting adventure in the lives of those two famous marshals of the Old West, Lightning Jim Whipple and Whitey Larson. Mm -hmm.